So if you had a feel that look, I was saying if you had a feel that looks somewhat like this, where well, there might be rabbits, and you were a biologist studying populations, you'd want to know how many rabbits there were. But it'd be really difficult to count every one of them. Jonas, so, you'd have to take me everywhere you went to catch rabbits. Scientists have many techniques to count populations of individuals, really? no matter how large or small they are, or how fast they move. Where'd you get that from? Nature. I, I just found him. Do you see that? Man, those deer are everywhere nowadays. That's because they don't have natural predators in most areas. So their population just keeps getting bigger and bigger. <sighs> That's why we have to manage populations. To keep the numbers in balance with ecosystems. And to keep so many from causing road accidents, Hazen. Sorry, yeah. Well, how would you, yeah, you, determine the population of deer that live in your area? Well, that's the problem that scientists have. They have to find the best way to count animals in a certain area. One. Two. This has got to be the best possible way to do this. I'm, yeah, One, two, really. three, four. <laughs> All right, so if you think about it, counting wild animals is a lot like counting, well, people. It wouldn't be practical to count every individual in the population. And so you take a subsample and then extrapolate. Yeah, and there are lots of different methods scientists use to do this. So let's start by measuring something that doesn't move, plants. So if we wanted to know how much of this sunflower species is in this whole field, we could go and count every single stem that's in this entire prairie. But that's totally impractical and almost impossible and it would take a really long time. So what we could do is take a subsample using this quadrant and we count how many sunflowers are in this small square and then we can extrapolate to the entire prairie. So we started sampling. Ramesh and I threw the quadrant randomly in this huge field and counted the sunflower stems inside the quadrant for each toss. And then we could estimate whether the population of sunflowers in this field is increasing, decreasing, or staying the same. Ramesh uses the quadrat sampling method to understand the population dynamics of sunflowers. Quadrats are one of the important tools biologists use to determine the size of plant populations. So counting plants may be straightforward, but what about counting animals that don't stay in one place? To make things even more complicated, picture counting animals that move great distances on the water, like sharks. There's a few different ways you can go about counting a population of sharks. What we do in the white tip study is use photo identification. We take pictures of sharks that have unique markings on their side, and then whenever we get a new picture, we can tell if we've seen that shark before or if that's a new shark. So Nick led me out onto the shallow reef to look for white tips. Nick took the lead by diving down and looking for crevices. When the sharks came out, Morgan, who operated the camera, recorded the sharks. The cameras allow for a simple way to count the population visually. They have a log of all the sharks they've ever encountered. Nick is using this data to answer important questions like looking at the movement patterns of the sharks. All of the work Nick is doing is extremely important in understanding the species and may one day be important in the conservation of the sharks in this area. So this method works well here, while other studies may require some slight modifications. For example, what happens if an animal hides during the day and is active at night? All right, large, somewhat nocturnal animals pose other problems. Yeah, small one. 
All right, so when Jonas and I work on cats that come out at night, we use this remotely triggered night vision camera. And they're great because they capture everything that walks in front of them. It allows us to do a type of mark and recapture study because we can determine individuals based on their spot patterns. And that allows us to look at old individuals and determine new individuals that come into an area. Okay, so we're showing you a couple sampling techniques used by scientists to look at populations of cats and plants and huge fish. But really, we need to start looking at populations of deer. So start thinking of ways that you can look at populations of deer. So this is one way the scientists use to count deer populations. They fly transects, that's the old part. And then they use high-tech infrared video see those dots down there? Those are deer. Hey, I think I see it right down there. Hey, you guys, circle around, down there, down there. Never stop exploring your world.